A very warm welcome to Paisley Abbey's daily prayer for Saturday the 27th of June. Let us pray. O God our Defender, when storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid, rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In these Saturdays in June, we have been looking at the Abbey's patron saints. We began with St. Milberga, who links us with the Priory of Wenlock, from where the monks came to establish the monastery at Paisley. Then we had St. James the Great, Apostle and Martyr, who links us with the hereditary High Steward of Scotland and subsequently the Royal House of Stuart. Last week we focused on Mary, the Virgin Mother of our Lord. Today we turn to our local saint, Saint Mirren. Mirren was a contemporary of St. Columba and prior of Bangor. Coming to Scotland around 580, he founded a church on the banks of the River Cart on or near the site of the present abbey. All we know about Mirren is to be found in the Aberdeen Breviary, which incidentally was the first book printed in Scotland in 1510. A prayer and six lessons are given for St. Mirren's Day, which falls on the 15th of September. On the east wall of the St. Mirren Chapel, there is a frieze dating from the 15th century, with scenes depicting the lessons. We see Mirren being presented to St. Congo to be brought up in the monastery of Bangor. We see Mirren being made prior of the monastery of Bangor. Here there is related the story of Mirren being refused permission by a certain king of Ireland to evangelize, not to be thwarted. Mirren prayed that the pains and sufferings of childbirth being endured by the Queen be transferred to the King. This happens so that, as we read in the breviary, for three days and as many nights he ceased not to shout before all the chiefs of his kingdom. He relents, grants Mirren what he requested, and is then freed from all his pains. Here a shaft of divine light shines on Mirren as he reads in his cell. In the lessons in the bravery there is reference to a couple of miracles performed by Mirren and here we have Mirren restoring to life one of the monks who had collapsed and died while working in the fields. The only reference to Paisley in the Breviary comes right at the end of the sixth lesson. At length, full of sanctity and miracles, he, Mirren, slept in the Lord at Paisley. The church there is dedicated to God under his invocation. Writing of these stories, my predecessor, Dr. Cameron Lees, wrote this. We may perhaps smile at the story of the miracles which cluster around Mirren, but in all of them there is set forth the victory of a good and beneficent man over evil, whether it be of matter or of spirit. Amid the traditions associated with our local saint, we discern the form of one who is well worthy of reverence. And when the inhabitant of Paisley 
mentions the familiar name of Miriam. It is well that he should know it is that of one of the apostles of primitive Christianity, the disciple of Congo and the friend of St. Columbo. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church through the love and devotion of your saints. We give you thanks for your servant, Mirren, whom we commemorate today. Inspire us to follow his example, that we in our generation may rejoice with him in the vision of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us say together the family prayer of the Church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. We end today with one of the Shemili Qurans by J.S. Bach. I'm